do you know about the life lessons of yin yang, Maggie? Let me enlighten you. When things go to your plan, that is a miracle. That's an anomaly. When things don't go to your plan, that's just the universe. So you need to accept, accept and expect and be free and okay and comfortable with discomfort and when things don't go your way. Last night, it happened again. And we woke up this morning. And you know that garden we've been working on? Well, about 80% of the corn and cilantro that was about this tall has been eaten by Ichibito the goat. Look at all that. Um, this is a, is it a big deal? It's a big deal in that this is what we've been devoting the majority of our energy for about a month and a half or two months. I don't even know how long I've been here at this point. Um, we've put in s literally blood, sweat, and tears. I just got a little gash in my hand. So much blood, sweat, and tears with this fence, with everything, with the mulch, the garden, planting, reseeding. And in one minute, our goat, who's our friend, can eat 80% of our garden and we can't do anything about that. And that is the universe and that's beautiful. And we can't experience the lightness without the dark. And that's why I have this yin yang tattoo to remind myself in these situations, I have two options. Option one, oh Ichibito, you motherfucker. I'm such a victim. You hate me. I hate my life. Everything is, everything is terrible. We're screwed. N nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna, ah. or, just see it for what it really is, which is a random experience, and the goat was just trying to eat, and it's just plants, and we can just put the seeds back in the ground. Sure, maybe they'll be a month or a month and a half late now. Not the end of the world. It happens, and it's a learning opportunity to do better next time. Clearly, when there's a goat on the property that's super freaking big, maybe build your fence a little taller. Meaning, like, we should have built the fence a little taller. So, uh, it's just a, it's, it's a crazy thing, though. Like these plants that I've become a little bit attached to, so excited to see their growth, and then boom, they just get snipped like that. And so I just am grateful for this experience because every time that I become attached to something in life, a relationship, a friend, Maggie, my plants, uh, anything, a concept, like a, a material thing, an, an ethereal thing, any notion of attachment to something where you base your identity or self-love or happiness on something other than yourself, it's not a good recipe for happiness and success because the goat is going to eat your garden. Okay, use that as the metaphor. Uh, something is going to crash and burn. You cannot control the world. And if you try to control your life and the world, you're gonna live miserable. If you just enjoy that you can breathe and eat food and when shitty things like this happen, you literally just let them roll off of you immediately and then just act, right? You just act. Now we're just going to replant everything. So we still have some cilantro, but as you can see, here, let me get to like a really good part where he ate a lot, you know, right here, all these are cut down because Ichibito, who we now punished by locking with the pigs. I bet your belly, I see your fat belly. I'm happy your belly's so nice and fat with all that corn. I'm sure you're enjoying it instead of the people on the road that we were gonna sell it to. I still love you, Ichibito, because I know you didn't try to harm us. It's just your reality. I actually thank you. Thank you for this experience. I'm not attached. I am free. It's just a great day.
yes, when I bought this thingy, whatever you call it, like for strapping stuff on the top of cars, uh, it was for a slack line, of course, and we are trying to figure out the best setup for it, and this is kind of crazy and sketchy. I don't think this is gonna work. It's too loose. We need something like really tight, um, but we'll figure it out, Maggie. I needed slack line in my life, and I manifested it. I was like, oh, where, where am I gonna buy one? And then, of course, I just found this at a uh, like a yard sale on the street and I was like yep Hace frío hoy, es perfecto, es buenísimo. Hace calor muchos días, so perfecto. Got my overnight oats. I'm gonna be doing that most days probably. I love it and I wanna get more experimental. Gotta get chia seeds, almond milk. I mean, that right there will be a game changer. I'm definitely starting to eat a bit healthier. My first five or six weeks here were just a bit like, I mean, they were great, no regrets at all. I just woke up many mornings just feeling really lethargic and tired. And so in the last two days, I decided to eat a little bit more mindfully, not just stuff my face with like a lot of refined food. And I feel significantly better, duh, as I do every single time I eat healthy. It is always the way to go. It's fun to go and uh, eat other things, unhealthy food, have nights where you're just like munching out with your friends and talking late at night, that's beautiful. And then going back to eating healthy is also great. And daily green boost powder, shout out to the DGB fam. If you wanna eat the barley grass juice powder that I travel with across the world and support, a vegan owned company by my friend Jamie, who's a high carb vegan, and just eat the healthiest green powder you could possibly have. They ship it right to your house, and uh, you can get 10% off your order by typing in Plantriotic as the discount code when you go to dailygreenboost.com and buy a bottle online. And you're supporting the vlog. Like, it's actually a huge Part of my income is you guys typing that in when you buy it because I know a lot of you use it. I used this product for years before I linked up with Jamie or anything. So thank you. It like it really helps and you guys get a discount. So it's just like it's a win for all of us. Perfect mangoes every day. Incredible atulfos. God, I love Mexico. almost just knocked down and maybe broke my new camera. But girl, you're a professional. You dodged it. That's why I love you, amongst every other reason. Nice. The slack line is set up. The dogs are happy walking throughout the mountains. I'm walking Maggie and Burro. We just, uh, hi Burro. Everyone come say hi to Burro. So Burro is not um, officially like a part of the tribe in the same way. Burro is, well, he is now while he's here. But Buro is the dog of a friend of Trino's who lives in Tijuana and lives in the city. So he thought it would be nice for Buro to come live with us here on the farm for a couple months. And I think he likes it, but it sucks. We have to keep him tied on a long leash to something on the property all day because he's not our dog and he just doesn't have the confidence of living on a farm. We don't know if he'll just run off and it's not our dog. So I make sure to go take him for walks, but he's so sweet. Buro, I love you, Buro. And Maggie likes him too. 
You're so sweet. I don't think that huskies belong in Mexico, though. It's very hot for you. Your coat is very big. I know. Friends and family have been talked to, talked to my parents and my best friend, Jason, for an hour. Two of my best friends, guys, I'll just say them right here, Jason Boxer and Naomi Davis, both from NYU, two of my best friends in the world, social justice activists, vegans, the nicest people ever, beautiful. They both independently have messaged me in the last month and said, dude, quitting my job, moving out of the city, Jason's in New York City, Naomi's in Berkeley, dude, getting out, going to travel the world for a year and meditate and yeah. And it just makes me happy because I live this way. I prioritize in my life, living adventurously, connecting with strangers, inspiring people, meditation, the things that, you know, being around animals that spiritually soothe me. And sometimes, I don't wanna say it's difficult, but hey Maggie, drop it, drop it, drop it. Maggie, drop it. It's not that it's difficult, but it is, it's just beautiful when I get reinforcement. Hey, Pera! No, you see that? Maggie ran by her and Pera tried to nip her. I just love what I'm trying to say with my rosy cheeks from the sun for the last two hours is that it's really nice for me when people who are close to me also reject the mainstream notions of the life that they were leading and just admit that sometimes it is smart to think about your heart and soul first and quit your job, even if it's impractical. But if you don't feel like this is the optimal version of the life that you're living, this is the only life you have. So no matter how much money in your career, or girlfriend or power or stability, it's not worth it if it doesn't feel right to you somewhere inside. Go out and take the adventure, take the risk. It's gonna be more worth it. And two of my friends are doing that for extended periods of time. And it makes me happy that we're all doing that together. We're waking up as a society and it's beautiful. and a beautiful mango, tomato, cilantro, onion, salsa. Maggie, it's been another day in paradise. Grateful for my friends, grateful for my family for caring about me, grateful for Ichibito for eating half of our garden. Much love, Dream Extreme fam. A lot of lessons to learn in life, especially if you put yourself out of your comfort zone and cook on fire, stuff like that. The world's crazy.